Welcome to World Cup Outtakes. If it's weird, if it's wonderful, and if it happened in the World Cup, you'll see it here as we take a look at the good, the bad, and the ugly side of the not-so-beautiful game. If you get it wrong or you get it right, that is your defining moment. The World Cup is, it always has these extraordinary moments which make you think, God, this is an amateur organisation. Just all the shenanigans and skullduggery that goes on. That's what makes it better, that's what makes it funny. In the next half hour, you'll experience the excitement. See the controversial. Remember the practical jokers. The biggest wind-up in World Cup football history. And tut tut some truly Oscar-winning performances. But let's kick off with the keepers. Goalies, the last line of defence. They can help win World Cups or in a split second earn immortality the wrong way. It all ends with a keeper, doesn't it? Great keepers can win your games, um, but also great keepers can get beaten and just make one mistake and that's it. Oh, and Seaman's been beaten! It's a goal! If they make a mistake, it's a goal. Simple as that. Goes for the shot this time. What do you call someone who hangs around with footballers? A goalkeeper. He scooped that helplessly. Oh, and he's now slipped! The first thing a World Cup goalkeeper needs to do is check no one sabotaged his chances by smearing butter on his gloves. Or his knees. And sometimes you need luck, not to mention defenders. Conte, the goalkeeper went with his foot, still Conte. Keepers come right out of his area. Now where's this going to end up? It's in the net. Get over that of his goal. Goalies are what you call characters. In Peru, they call Ramon Quiroga El Loco, the madman. In 1978, the rest of the world discovered why. Right to the way out, Salazzo, and there's Quiroga. Quiroga is in the other half, and he must get a booking. I mean, what he thought he was doing, I don't know. And he, he didn't go for the ball at all, he just took the man straight up in the air. And he gets the yellow card from Mr Padrid. I love the way that he, he runs back with his arms behind his back. It's classic schoolboy done wrong. But Quiroga's got nothing on the self-styled Colombian king of the renegade keepers. Oh, he makes it look so easy. Standing ovation for Renegade. The runner Higuita, of course, modelled himself on King Charles II. He's the pimp daddy. He's got the hair, the flair, and he likes to live dangerously. Oh, great turn. He's a star. Well, in many ways, he was a football visionary and a hero and prepared to sacrifice his team's well-being for the overall good of the game. <laughs> I think they called it the Scorpion, didn't they? Perfectly done. Did he like it? It, it was textbook goalkeeping, but unfortunately, Higuita did have the wrong textbook. <laughs> Unreal! He was the captain as well. I mean, even the fact he was, he was the, the biggest nutter on the planet, he still captained them. There was a great moment when he played Cameroon and he was at fault for them going out of the World Cup. He just dribbled the ball to 40 yards out of his goal and, and Roger Miller took the ball off him and just tapped it into the net. And Nikita's got himself into trouble and it is no surprise. The best thing is as Roger Miller goes charging off, he then tries to scythe him down from behind, <laughs> doesn't he, in the box. I mean, it's an, it's an awful charge. <laughs> and he connected, he could have broken his leg. <laughs> and Higuita pays the penalty for being the sweeper-keeper. Before the football starts though, we have to sit through the pomp and silliness of the opening ceremony. Who do they make these things for? That's what I don't understand. Once upon a time, this meant a few flags, balloons and some hired entertainers, like Brooklyn Beckham's party but smaller. As far as I remember, the teams just came out, they played a bit of their national anthem, they waved to their mum in the crowd who'd got a cheap ticket to come over and see them, and that was it. It now gives me great pleasure to declare open the eighth World Football Championships. And then they played football, where nowadays it usually involves releasing doves to symbolise peace across the universe, uh, and equal rights, and no racism, and save the kids. You've always got to have people dancing as well, don't you? Who cares about dancing? I mean, when was the last time someone went, oh, brilliant, some dancing? 
I like opening ceremonies. I'd pe they, always, they always get lambasted, but there's always room for comedy in there. This is a vinegar dance group from the small town of Vinegar. They've always got to have a ball in there somewhere, haven't they? People coming out of balls, or people kicking balls, or exploding balls. I mean, it's all just a load of balls, basically. It's the opening of USA Soccer World Cup 94, and you can depend on a country that calls it soccer to make a mess of it. If America hosts anything, you can expect an opening ceremony sort of more glitzy and more bling than anywhere else. The Yanks decided that what the World Cup was crying out for was adult-oriented rock. But John Cicada's performance couldn't rise to the occasion. They were trying to levitate Cicada up onto the plinth, weren't they? But he only got halfway up. The stage manager's got to be pleased, haven't they, really? They, I mean, they've got to be pleased. They've looked up, they've seen Cicada stuck halfway into the stage and they must have given themselves a pat on the back. Not many people remember John stuck in a hole Cicada because of one lady. Miss Diana Ross! Well, she wasn't actually singing, she was miming, because if you look at it, the microphone's actually, it's not even near her mouth when she's singing. It's all choreographed and no, no doubt they've practiced before. She runs up to the penalty spot. Somebody must have said, what if she misses the goal? She won't miss the goal from there, she can't. It's, don't worry, it'll be okay on the day, it'll be all right. But with the world watching, Diana Ross managed to miss. Every man in the world, at the same time in unison, there was a deafening noise of space of the phrase, typical woman. Many players, some even better than Diana Ross, have missed penalties on the big stage like that. For example, David Batty, and he, was not as good a soul singer as Diana Ross, so 1-0 uh, to Ross over Batty. The, flick on, the, flick out. the collapsing Diana Ross goal made a cheeky return a few days later in the Mexico-Bulgaria match. Look at that. Play was delayed indefinitely, so Motti and Trevor Brookin were forced to commentate not on football, but DIY, while someone rushed around to the local branch of Goals Are Us. Ross is too small, isn't he, to get up to readjust it, so they're looking frantically for a maintenance man to come and repair it. It gets ludicrous, their commentary, doesn't it, when they have to, they have to get excited about someone bringing in a new goalpost. Well, it's coming out from the other end of the pitch. And the two little fellas bring on this big massive goal, reminded me of, of cold Saturday mornings in Billingham. We had to bring our goals out and it was nice to see that sort of grassroots commitment being transposed to the, uh, to the big stage. Referees, you can't have a game without one, but where do they come from? What strange, misguided child asked their parents for a replica referees kit for Christmas? Referees are some of the most egotistical, self-centred, self-important people on this earth. 